there's, there's this understanding of love that's a misconception that if you love someone you let them do whatever they want to do and that means you really love them the theme of it was uh, he didn't teach hate he washed feet and it's not a good place it's not a good uh, standard uh, because what happens is there's no longer a standard. they don't really know how much he hates sin they don't understand why he hates sin because they're unable to distinguish between sinner and sin and I think what happens is much of the ecclesia and the church world and the body believers milk down the definition of who he is he's just a baby in a manger We're living in a culture that is trying to define who Yeshua is by their Greek philosophy and uh, by their New Age philosophy uh, and trying to enforce that somehow that this is who Jesus is. And if you say that you're a believer in Yeshua, you should do it this way. Really, many of them never even cracking open the Bible reading it at all, but trying to define who he is. Uh, we experienced that in the commercial of the Super Bowl recently. If you saw that, uh, it, it's not good. And if you didn't, don't go look it up and watch it. It's not really worth seeing, but it was really not good. The, the theme of it was, uh, he didn't teach hate, he washed feet. And basically, there was lesbian and homosexual people washing each other's feet, and it was just very um, not who Jesus is, not who Yeshua is, uh, not the moral heart of God. Uh, see, there's, there's this understanding of love that's a misconception, that if you love someone, you let them do whatever they want to do, and that means you really love them, but that's just not true. Uh, love doesn't do that. Real love doesn't do that. Anybody that's a parent knows that. Uh, the first time they have their, their baby wanting to touch something that they shouldn't touch or do something they shouldn't do. And, well, you know, have a two-year-old look at you and go, hey, well, if you love me, you'll let me walk out in front of this truck. And it's because it's what I want to do. Uh, and it is that graphic. It is that dire right now in the culture. Uh, and they're trying to define who Yeshua is and thereby define who believers are. And there is an attack in the body of Messiah globally for this homosexual agenda, for the LGBTQ agenda, for transgender, for wokeness, for really uh, coming away from Scripture and coming into just philosophies. So I want to say that in our community, we love everyone. We love people who are lost. We love people who are found. Uh, we love people who are struggling. Uh, we love people who are, are free and walking on fire. Uh, but the truth is in this book. The truth is in the scripture, the roots of this book we just read from. Uh, and the morality and the heart and the attributes of the living God are, are strung throughout these words. And if we come away from what he has revealed to him of himself to us, then we become our own dictators of what morality is. Uh, and it's not a good place. It's not a good uh, standard uh, because what happens is there's no longer a standard. Uh, that standard becomes a relative and then you have relative morality instead of godly biblical morality based upon a standard of righteousness and holiness that our creator has revealed to us. This isn't even my message, so this is extra credit. <laughs> it's so important because we were watching this commercial and I had some people text me excited that there was a commercial about washing feet. And I kind of texted them back and I said, yeah, I think they missed it on this one. This is a big miss because they don't know who Yeshua is. They don't really know how much he hates sin. They don't understand why he hates sin because they're unable to distinguish between sinner and sin. And, and they just think God doesn't want them to have fun, doesn't want them to be free, 
doesn't want them to whatever the case may be, which we know if people are in bondage to sin, they really aren't free. They're really in a cycle of being manipulated and kept from who their creator made them to be. Sorry, I'm on a little soapbox here, but it's so important. It's so important for us as believers to not be pushed back on who they think Jesus is, who Yeshua is, who the God of Abraham, Isaac is. Let the word of God come in response to that. No, you know, this Yeshua that you're talking about turned over some temple tables uh, with a little bit of fervor because of his love for the house of the Lord and the presence of the Lord that had been turned into a place that was carnal and ungodly and full of idolatry and full of money, you know, just focusing on what the money was uh, and, and selling and buying the, the sacrifices and all those things that had robbed the understanding of the mercy seat that we just had so wonderfully taught to us. And that this was a place of mercy and love and redemption and life. But it has to be in the context of his law, commandments, and standards. It can't be willy-nilly. It's not just left for, for men to decide. That is new age. That is Greek philosophy. You know, the, the, the new generation now that's in college. Wow, I'm really on a soapbox. thinks it's been invented by them, this uh, ability to, to dissect or to, as in, in the terms is dismantleism, to dismantle anything that is a standard, to give a relative application to anything, which means you can do whatever you want because you pick the standard. And when they do that with the word of God, what happens is there is no standard. And the truth and the clarity that really brings life when you receive it by faith is lost. So I want to encourage us as the Lord's people to not be afraid to, to define Yeshua the way the Bible defines him. He is a jealous God. He's a God who loves his people. He is a God who is our defense. He is the Lord of angel armies. He is mighty. He is the most high potentate. He is the strongest one in the room. And his definition of himself to us through Scripture should be what we receive and go by. His, thereby, his definition of the ecclesia and the body of Messiah is defined by that truth. Can you see how watered down it can get? if you have a misunderstanding of who the Lord is. Now, the Word of God is alive, and it's working all the time and bringing fresh revelation to each generation. But that revelation doesn't undermine the truth of the revelation that has come before. It's actually built upon it. And it's why it's so strong and sturdy and immovable. So we stand on the word of God. We make no apologies. We don't try to rewrite it. We don't cherry pick it for our own wants. We don't pull out a scripture out of context to apply it some way that it's not meant to be applied. We let it direct our life. We don't try to tell it how to do what God wants to do. We receive it and walk in it. And the job of of leaders like myself and elders and Bible study teachers is to equip the body for the work of ministry, to equip the body in their knowledge of the Lord, who they are to Him, how much He loves them, and to get a hold of the destiny and calling they have for their lives. It's not to manipulate, it's not to abuse, it's not to drive in a certain direction for their own gain, it's to lay down like Yeshua, who in warfare gave his life to take upon himself our sin, which means there is real sin. Real sin that needs to be atoned for. Real things that we do wrong or bad that destroy our relationship with our creator. And he took that upon himself. 
And when he descended and he went in, in Hades and he struggled and, and was there, the scripture says he rose up with the keys of death and hell. And I think what happens is much of the ecclesia and the church world and the body believers milk down the definition of who he is. He's just a baby in a manger. He came and, and he loved everybody and he cared about everybody and he let everybody do whatever they and he, and he never he never judged anyone. I mean, I don't know what Bible they're I don't know where they're getting this from because it is so clear. He judged, but he is not judgmental. Vengeance is his, but he's not vindictive. Because he's holy and righteous and loving and merciful. He is the definition and source of all of these attributes. And if we want to walk in them and be like him, then we have to believe and receive by faith his definition of them. So I think I need to get into my message. <clears throat> 